Okay, and welcome, and thank you so much for that keynote. Um, it is an honor to present after you, and um, you've already shown this page. I'm just gonna make it bigger. Maybe you see it quite clearly. It's important that you can see it. Okay, this is state of the art, the latest uh, portal that has been fully developed and deployed for Botswana, as Bill has mentioned. Um, so my, um, and this is sort of our prior child at the moment. Um, we've worked quite consistently to get this running. Um, the project started in August 2021, and now, less than a year and a half later, there is an online portal accessible throughout the whole world, um, fully functional, accepting applications and um, obligation submissions. So what you see here is the home page of this uh, portal. I actually want to take a step back and just quickly say that if you do want to access the this is a test version, but if you do want to access the um, live production environment that is actually accessible globally, you can just go to our um, Landfolio portal page, and you'll see that you'll find there Botswana Mining Cadastre eGov portal. If you click on that, you'll go straight on to, um, I don't know where my internet is, sorry. Straight on to the, um, live version of Botswana. And anyone has access to the site all over the world. This is the home page that they will see as, as soon as they log in. And um, you see that there's a few um, help videos just to assist to guide users through the system, um, which hopefully um, is very straightforward. Um, you also have the map portal. And if you have seen some of our other portals that we've deployed, they, it's very similar. It's a similar technology. We still use RGIS. And this is all the data, the tenure data for Botswana, as it is live in the system. As I'm saying, this is the production um, environments that I'm demonstrating here. Um, and um, as the minister kindly um, mentioned, you can actually click and see the information for each of those licenses in the system. So what is the license code? Where does it lie? What is the area of it? Which resources are being explored? Um, who holds these licenses? What are the relevant dates? Okay. Um, and that goes for all the license types that we have um, imported into the system, as it was mentioned, about 1,600 licenses at the moment, which with a spatial component, right? The map is still, as if you've seen our other map portals, interactive, so you can select what it is that you wish to see on this um, map or not by switching on and off each layer. Let me go down. And we also added administrative areas, mineral recurrence, occurrences, and geology. So the map that was so kindly showed using a different system, if you do switch that on here, you can see it straight from um, our portal as well. This is the geology of it. Right. Um, and you have the functionality to make searches still. So a lot of what you're seeing is just, um, it's very similar to what we had before, just slightly slicker. Let me look for um, licenses. You can search and pull through results. <laughs> okay. Oop. Not working. I'll do this on the test demo, on the test site instead. Um, and then we have, so home page, map portal, information. I'm not gonna go through this information um, in details, but basically this is um, just to give uh, background to the Department of Mines, um, what licenses and, and divisions um, are um, accepted. Other resources, so these are resources that were provided to us by BGI, which has been um, a great facilitator for this project. Um, and um, as this mining cadaster was part of the bigger Niger system, you can access their pages here, the training videos, if there's any um, or help videos for the users, uh, privacy statements, terms of use. I'm not gonna go into it in detail, but you know what it's all about. I actually just want to get to the meat of it. So this is the home page, and if you, if you look here, it says that um, to be able to view your obligations and applications or apply for licenses, you have to register in the portal. Makes sense. So 
I'm not going to go through the process of registration now, but if you do wish to see it, please do have a look at the um, video, how to register on the portal. What I, do what I would like to show you today is how to submit an application. Let's see, the time now is 9.36. Let's see how quick I can do this. Okay. So once you register account, an account with the portal, your account will then be reviewed by the Department of Mines and you'll be able to sign in. Okay. Demo site. Thank you. <laughs> Who was that angel that said that? Um, okay. And it comes equipped with multi-factor authentication. So at this point, I would have received a one-time password on my phone or on my browser here. Um, and this is just an extra layer of security. Nine, four, seven, five. No one do this. successfully logged in. And at this stage, I'll land on my li license dashboard. This happens because my account has already been approved by the Department of Mines, they verified my documents, and they have a signed representation to Trimble and all other entities that I wish to represent. I'll be representing the Trimble test company today. It is a Trimble conference, <laughs> after all. Okay, so you have the license dashboard, um, fairly straightforward. These are all um, the um, licenses which are held by Trimble Test Company. In this case, all active. You can go to my applications and have a look at that. Only one inactive, all licenses, pending obligations and pending payments, which I'll touch on um, just after. Okay, so Everything, all these licenses, all the licenses that are held by my company, Trimble Test Company, and all the payments that are due for this um, company um, are displayed here, and I can immediately jump on them from this page. Okay, but before we go there, let's start from the beginning. How do I even um, apply for a license and get it through to the Department of Mines and edit here? So, the only, the only button to do this is very clear, apply for license. Straightforward. So on apply for license, you'll get redirected to a page with all the tenure available for application. In the case of Botswana specifically, there are about 32 license types, and that would include mineral concession licenses, miscellaneous licenses, and explosive licenses as well. So quite um, a catalog here. Um, if you look at the mineral concession licenses, these are just the top ones. If I go browse all, you'll then see the full um, list of licenses available for application. Any time now. Okay. Demo gods. I can see it's thinking. So how's everyone doing today? <laughs> okay. Thanks for the laughter. I'll just take a step back and go through it again. It's helpful so that you can actually, you know, repetition helps you remember. Okay. So if I go to browse all, I should be able to see the full list of um, license or uh, mineral concessions available for application. This is take two, right? Um, and here we are, prospecting licenses, exploration licenses, retention, mining licenses, development, mineral permits. So this is specific to Botswana, right? And um, fairly straightforward, if I do wish to apply for a prospecting license, where should I click? You would never guess. Apply now, right? Um, and you get to select which commodity group you wish to apply for. Um, I'm gonna go for, does anyone wanna pick? All of them work. Okay, energy. <laughs> Thanks, I like that, let's keep it energetic. Um, okay, so these are the steps. 
straightforward. It's an application or prospecting license. Um, you have the application instructions on the side to guide users um, towards what actually needs to be accomplished here. These steps should be um, filled in automatically. I apologize. I think my connection is a bit slow. I left the demo all the way at the back. OK. Sorry about that. OK, so you'll see that this is just the main landing page. Please complete this application information. Applic no one reads this. But applicant, Trimble Test Company, because this is the company. Thank you, Bill. Sorry about that. Um, and I have to make sure that I'm representing, that I'm indeed representing the company that I wish to apply, that will be the, then the title holder of this license. So prospecting license, that's what I selected. Energy minerals, that's what you selected. Um, and any comments. And then all you really need to do is fill in these details. So I'm applying for energy. Um, I'm interested in coal, in, in, in prospecting for coal. If I click on view more, I'll see the full um, list of commodities. These are just the most common ones that we filter through to make the process more streamlined. Um, following the commodities, we can then select the coordinates. Okay, this is all done by the public. I could be sitting in China doing this. Um, well, not on the test site, but you get my gist. So um, there are various ways of uh, selecting an area. You can draw, you can import coordinates from a shapefile or map info. Um, there's advanced tools that just help speed up that process with project coordinates, and edit coordinates. For the purposes of this demo, I'm just gonna draw it. I'm sure that you don't want me to sit here and enter every single coordinate, so you're welcome. <laughs> Let's do that and just select an area. You see that the coordinates are created automatically based on the area that I selected. I can then go and edit these coordinates if necessary, if there's a mistake there, which I'm not gonna go through. And you'll also notice that the calculated area was, um, has been displayed automatically. So this area has been calculated automatically based on whatever area was selected. Um, once I save, it will run a shape validation or an area validation. And this is just a process that will allow portal user applications to see if there are any overlaps, right? We don't want it to overlap with area, other, other areas. Um, just give it a moment for the map to load. And, and that is also to ensure that whatever applications are actually submitted through the portal have a valid area. Right? And that would already minimize the workload on the Department of Mines side to have to check for those overlaps. So only valid um, areas would be accepted. And you can see clearly from the map that there are two overlaps there. I'm just gonna clip all and remove those areas from the system. The shape is now valid. So I'll proceed. This is the fun part, no it's not. I'm just gonna very quickly upload all the um, required documents. Again, this is an exact copy from production, which means that these are the documents required to make a prospecting license application. Let me just look for it, application form, binding agreement. I'm gonna do it fairly quickly. Don't know if I have all of them. Copy of ID. Okay, there, I selected a document which is empty. So again, the portal will tell you that you cannot submit a document unless there's actually content in it. Again, easing the work for the Department of Mines to not have to go through the hassle of looking at empty documents. Let me speed up the process here before I lose you. Company extract. Oops. Again, this is just um, for demo purposes, so I'm selecting um, any documents which I have, and it allows PDF, Word documents, um, Excel documents, and all sorts. Once all the documents have been selected, you'll see, actually let me, 
you see that the submit button becomes available. I should have pointed it out before. If you didn't pick up, it was grayed out before. So only after all the documents are in, the area is validated, all the details required are in, you can then actually submit this license. Okay, and there's also related licenses which you can add. So if you, for example, were applying for a mining license, which I am not, you could select then, or it's related to an existing prospecting license, all right? And, and all that information would be captured by the applicant online, sitting in the comfort of their home or office. Um, going forward, I'm gonna remove that. And then submit, okay. Um, one of the other um, changes that came with this um, portal, which I won't go into much detail because I'm sure that whoever comes after me will, will chat about it and the future of framework, um, it is the ability to capture relevant information for this application, so in terms of program of operations, visibility studies, all um, fields which can be made available here, and instead of being now captured by in back office by the Department of Mines or by back office users can be captured here. I'm gonna do it very quickly because I think I've been talking too much in the last four minutes. <laughs> okay, so you can select the various modes um, for prospecting activities, your magnetic, in year two I'm gonna spend this much. Aerial photography. Okay, and I do apologize if it doesn't, if there's lots of experts here in prospecting licenses and applications and this data makes no sense, um, but it's just to demonstrate that we do, we can capture it. And this work is, again, no longer done by um, the Department of Mines, no manual capture, no documents handwritten. It would just be um, captured by the applicant themselves, and it's on them to actually capture this information correctly. The totals are then calculated in back office. You capture your information. This is the program of operations for prospecting license. Again, it's all customized for Botswana for the specific um, um, requirements. You can upload additional documents with it, okay, and submit. Right. At this stage, um, you'll be redirected to the license details of this license. So in, I wanna say it's been 12 minutes, I've applied for a prospecting license for energy, right? Standing in front of a whole crew, so not bad. Thank you, thank you. It was a team effort. Um, so it will be redirected to your license details. You can see this is a temporary code that was generated just to make sure that there are no duplicates and that each license has its own code and can be traceable. At this point, I'll also receive a notification from the portal. Please don't look at my inbox, it's a mess. Um, but that will show me, oops, shouldn't have done that. Um, that will show me that my application has been received. This is the code, please refer to it um, if you make other queries. And it gives me the summary of my coordinates. This is what I entered. And it tells me that the status is application pending document verification. This will then go into Landfolio, which I will not demonstrate for you today. Um, I'm sure you've seen a lot of it already. So I'm just gonna quickly focus on this. This is the application that I've submitted. And um, with it, you can also have licenses services and inspectorate services, such as application withdrawal requests, for example, that can be done directly on the portal. So, Application in in 15 minutes, no need for queues, no need for traffic, no need to for long wait, this is it. Um, on the remaining time that I have, I just actually want to show you the, um, the obligations part of it. So, so far you've seen how to apply for a license, okay? If I go to my dashboard um, and look at the licenses which are already hold, which are active, this is one of them, and again, similar to the other one, you have all the details of that license, and you have your pending obligations, this being an active license. Let's just give it a moment for it to load. But here you will be able to submit all your monthly reports or quarterly reports, um, all your payments, all, your, all the obligations that are due throughout the life cycle of this license as you can see here, and it tells you when those things are due, and it all can be done through the portal. Similarly for payments, annual payments, 
and the obligation history, meaning at any time I can log in onto portal and I can have a look at this license and I can see at what, um, which obligations I've submitted already. I've submitted my proposed program of operations. I've submitted my payment. Okay, and in any time, I can also apply for license of service. So transfer this license, suspend it, um, enlarge, uh, um, require a uh, enlargement or inspectorate services. Okay. Okay. Manage obligations. Time is up. Okay. My time is up. I see the red screen. I see it. Thanks. Um, so, but the goal is, um, and this just takes a little bit of time because there's so many obligations, but we would be able to submit then all those monthly reports that I just clicked on through the portal itself and payments. Um, I don't know if I have any grace. Can I stop here? Any questions? I think, I think what we'll do, our next speaker is Nick Holliman who's going to talk us through the technology, and then after that, we can wrap it up with, with questions. Nick, you happy with that? Cool. So while Nick gets here, I'm just going to faff around and show you a little bit more of the portal. Do you need a laptop? Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, well done. Thank you.